Coach Jake Nichols with Sports Illustrated. Can you just talk about what you've seen from Juwan Mitchell so far and what he's brought to this defense? Um, the, the biggest thing with Juwan, you know, with the group that we have because it's so young and hasn't, uh, you know, they haven't had real collegiate experience. He brings a lot of that. You know, he's played major college football. He was a starter in another Power Five conference. So he brings a lot of savvy uh, and brings a lot of veteran leadership, which is what this group needed. So he's been a, a, a welcome addition. But, you know, for our unit. Um, like I said, you know, savviness as far as seeing formations and, you know, being able to get lined up, knowing what adjustments are, just because he's, uh, you know, been a part of, you know, two, you know, pretty, um, you know, complex systems at the university he was at last time. So that's been, uh, you know, number one thing. We, we just kind of got in pads. So, um, you know, we finally got the, the physical part of it. And, you know, he did a good job there. But, you know, we want to get to a scrimmage before we, we put the, you know, evaluation, you know, uh, the permanent evaluation on. Yeah, Coach, how different does your room feel now con compared to spring one? And two, just your overall assessment of your physicality today. I, I know it's not a scrimmage, but just the physicality of that group today, first day in pads. Um, you know, first question, you know, obviously just, you know, strength in numbers. You know, at the end of spring, I think we were actually repping maybe five guys, you know, in that whole unit. So we were really, really thin, you know, getting, you know, obviously some of the guys that transferred in and getting, you know, some of the guys back that were injured has been huge, you know. Now we can get some quality reps and guys are not, you know, trying to save themselves, just trying to survive practice. And, you know, it, it, it increases the competition level, which is, you know, I always say is the best coach in the world is competition. So, you know, that's been, uh, you know, uh, a bright spot. You know, in the spring, everybody was like, you know, you might have to suit up. And I don't think the Vols fans want to see that. So I'm glad we got the numbers that we have. Um, yeah, first day in pads is always an exciting day. Uh, been been happy with it. You know, our guys, you know, when we've been in, uh, you know, thud tempo, which is just wrap-up tempo, we've had guys that, you know, have kind of been a little too exuberant and taking guys to the ground. So when we get the opportunity, we had the opportunity to do it today. I thought the guys really stepped up and did a good job there. Uh, right. What, what, when you look at this group, I mean, how many guys do you feel like you want to play consistently? Um, there's, uh, there's always uh, that magic number because of the position. Obviously, we're going to have guys that are going to travel and are going to be in the rotation, and then they're going to have guys that are going to travel and going to be mainly special teams players. So, you know, if the, if the group is right and, um, you know, they're playing the way it should, you could have anywhere from seven to eight that travel you know, with us even on road games. But as far as the rotation, you always want, would like to be three deep. And does that mean you're going to have six guys ready to play or you're going to have five guys with one of them being a swing guy? But, you know, rotation-wise, if, um, you know, everything goes the way it should, you'd love to have six guys that you feel like you could put in at any time and would help you win a game. Hey, Brian, just what, what are your thoughts so far on what you've seen from um, Mohan and then and also Aaron Willis since he wasn't out there this spring? Um, both, obviously, young kids. Um, obviously, with uh, Mohan, I have a little experience with him uh, from last year. You know, it's just with him learning the system. Uh, the challenge for him was always how to play a stack linebacker because he was a, a edge rusher in, um, in high school. So he is, he's been... You know, he's been really good. He's been better than I thought he would be as far as the learning aspect of it and learning to, you know, read and react it's just, instead of just being an upfield pass rusher. And then as far as uh, Aaron Willis, he's been a pleasant surprise. Uh, his biggest issue was um, without playing that COVID year, uh, he, he really set himself behind just conditioning-wise, so he had to get his body back into playing shape. Um, I feel like he had a good summer and has done that, and he's been a pleasant surpri surprise so far this camp. Coach, when you look at the defensive side as a, as a whole, I know your room kind of is a, a perfect example of this, and you just talked about it, but how different does this defense feel having these new bodies on the defensive line, linebacker, secondary, <clears throat> and then two, um, Quasi Garland, you know, how much have you growth have you seen from through spring practice to now? Um, as far as the defense as, as a whole, uh, I think we all feel it as coaches. Um, I think they would say, you know, per man, that, you know, we feel like we're coming together as a unit. 
Um, you know, obviously, we were able to get, you know, new guys, you know, both freshmen and transfers at all three levels, and they're all paying dividends. And kind of like I said about the linebacker room, we feel like we have so much more depth. But, you know, depth is one thing, and quality depth is another. And we feel like we're really building that with the guys that we've uh, brought in. Um, and as far as uh, Pat Garland has been, he's, uh, I think he's uh, actually improved from the spring. Um, you know, he was another uh, young man who came in as a defensive back and, and, you know, had to learn to play linebacker. And you can see the, you know, progress he's made from the first day of spring to right now. And, you know, we think he's going to be a, you know, a big factor for us on defense this year. Coach, kind of a two-part question. First, you didn't get to see Jeremy Banks in the spring. What, what have you kind of seen from him the first week about the way he practices and how he could fit? And kind of secondly, what uh, those two linebacker spots are they interchangeable? Is there a certain set of, or a certain skill set you want at one and a different one you want at the other? Could you kind of maybe explain what the differences are in those two spots? Yes, sir. Um, the um, you know Jeremy Banks, he, and, you know he's one of my uh, you know favorite guys on the team. You know you're talking about young man that I obviously wasn't here, but had to overcome a lot just to get you know here and um, be able to suit up for us. Uh, you know obviously plays the game hard he's 100 miles an hour you know for every play and the biggest thing with him we're, we're just trying to get him to play under control and uh you know play within the system but you never question his effort never question his toughness uh so he's been a you know pleasant surprise um and i think as far as the um positions he um Starting with Jeremy Banks, he's probably a prime example of a guy that could play both spots. We'd like to have them to be interchangeable. Obviously, you know, um, our weak side linebacker, which we call our Will, is a guy that is probably going to play in space a little bit more where you have to walk out on a receiver and, uh, you know, be a little bit more of a blitzer. Our Mike linebacker is probably more of our run defender. Uh, he's going to be in the box and have to take on offensive linemen, uh, linemen excuse me, and um, – make all the, uh, you know, coverage checks and front checks. So they, you'd like them to be interchangeable, but, you know, they have specific skills. But I'll say this, you know, based off of the offenses now with the spread, you know, starting with our offense that we see every day, those guys really do have to be interchangeable because it's turned into a space game and they're going to have to go out there and walk out over receivers and make plays. So we'd like them to be interchangeable athletically, but we do have, their, you know, specific skills for them, you know, per position. What's the communication been like with your group to, to other units, being able to communicate with the front and, and the back end? What have you seen from that sort of IQ and communication standpoint of your group? Um, I, I think it's been good. You know, that's one of the um, things Coach Banks always harps on. We, there should be some, some sort of communication every play, whether it's, you know, what you see from the offense or, you know, what our adjustments are on defense. And, you know, that's always the challenge for our guys, uh, you know, especially with the tempo that we see every day. But I think they're getting better. You know, we, we, we correct things on tape and it seems to be carrying over on the field. So, um, you know, that that's something that they're working on, but it can always get better if it's not 100 percent. And, you know, it's always something you want to work on. But we feel like we are, you know, trending in the right direction as far as the communication, you know, on all three levels. Coach, Morvin Joseph, has he, has he found a home yet? Is he a guy that can play inside or outside, or have you guys nailed down what he's going to do? Um, yeah, uh, Morvin has been with, with us at the inside linebacker spot, and we have some, uh, you know, specific packages where we're going to try to use him, you know, and uh, as a pass rusher because we feel like he does that, you know, really well. Um, you know, his big thing is he's another guy that was an edge guy in high school, is learning to play you know, stack linebacker because it's a difference because you're more, you know, read and react. And when you're an edge guy, you're more react and read. Um, and right now he's, he's um, you know, still trying to learn what to do as far as a stack linebacker. But he's he's been really good, you know, our first six practices. Um, uh, Mojo is an interesting, um, you know, um, player to evaluate because he's such a good athlete sometimes. He might look like it's taken him a little while to process, but when you really look at it, he's getting there faster than other people because he's, uh, you know, such a good athlete. So, we, you know, with guys like that, you want to make sure you put them in positions to have success. You don't want to keep, you know, pounding away 
you know, trying to pound, a, you know, uh, and take away from his skill set. So um, I think he's progressing, you know, at the rate that we want him to. Obviously, we want him to, you know, be a little faster and, uh, you know, be able to play stack as well as become an edge rusher. But he's been, you know, through the first six practices, he's been good. Brian, I'm wondering what the, the leadership is like from that group within the players, because I know that there are some, some veterans in that room, but they haven't played a ton of snaps on defense. So how is that process kind of evolving there? Um, I feel like with, with, with most things, if, if um, this defense is going to be, you know, what we, what we hope it to be and what we plan for it to be, I think the, the leadership is going to be developed. I don't think we had an established leader in the, uh, in the room. And I think, that, you know, the guys that are going to be vocal, they're going to have to be able to live it every day. And I feel like we're working toward that. Obviously, you'd like it to be a veteran guy, but we've put it out that, you know, anybody from a freshman to a senior, if, that, if that's what they feel like they can do, we want them to go out and lead. The more guys that are trying to lead, the better it's going to be. And obviously, the cream will rise to the top. And, you know, the guys will know who to follow. So it's a work in progress, but we have some guys that, you know, are trying to step up to the plate. Only going up against, you know, this type of offense maybe one or two times this year, but you're doing it in practice. How are, how are you guys responding on, on defense to trying to be able to install what you guys are going to do for most of the season compared to going out here and, and being so up-tempo against your offense? Um, that's the great part about with Coach Banks and his uh, system. Um, we're, we're still installing uh, the way we would no matter what the offense would be. And, you know, we will make the adjustments and we, we, we uh, kind of prep the, the players that way. Obviously, there's not there's certain things we wouldn't do against our offense if it was a game scenario. But we want to get better for, you know, uh, as a team and as a defense. So we have a normal install and we kind of adjust the way we need to. Um, we have our walkthrough periods where we can kind of go over what we think we're going to see on a week in, week out basis, you know, in the SEC. But, you know, like I said, that's the great part about with um, Coach Banks and how he's uh, kind of done the install. We're, we're going to go about it the way we would, you know, going against any type of offense. And, I, and it's worked out. It's worked out great. You think the players are picking it up on both sides, you know, trying to go up tempo a little bit, but then you are also trying to settle in what you're doing? Yes, there. yes. And, 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 you know, there's a fine line. Um, the tempo does nothing but make us better because you have to be able to react very quickly with the way that they're getting lined up. And then you always have video to coach off of because you have the effort and, uh, you know, as far as finishing plays. But you also have the, the uh, video as far as formations and how you fit plays. So it works out the way it needs to. And like I said, I, I give Coach Banks, you know, all the credit because he's structured our install that we, 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 we can actually go out and go play a game versus a team that's in 12 personnel, a team that's in 21 personnel, or a team that's in 10 personnel. And our guys would be able to be comfortable going out and executing a game plan versus any offense. Thanks, BJ. All right.